Hello and welcome to this educational webcast session where we're going to set out to solve the unique challenges of multi-carrier parcel shipping. My name is Michael Levins and I'm Group Editorial Director for Peerless Media Supply Chain Group, which of course includes Logistics Management Magazine, and I'll be your moderator for this session that's being brought to you by Logistics. As we continue to cover in the pages of logistics management, you know, faced with ra rising freight rates, driver shortages, and changing customer demands, both domestic and global shippers are using more technology to work through these and other transportation management challenges. Now, as one of the true workhorses of the supply chain management software cluster, transportation management systems, or TMS, have become the must-have for many, many companies, obviously, and they're, and they're working under the pressures of e-commerce and omni-channel fulfillment and they need to move beyond clipboards, spreadsheets, and phone calls to manage the increasingly sophisticated transportation networks. And with the help of a hardy TMS, obviously, shippers have certainly been able to optimize their freight transportation strategy. However, global parcel, parcel shipping really isn't the same as moving freight. You know, as global parcel shipping requires multiple carriers and works as the last mile in a multitude, in a multiple, in multiple different um, diff uh, disp distribution models. And that puts a lot of extra pressure and more complexity on parcel, on global uh, parcel uh, shipments, and especially in meeting that same day and next day delivery expectations. So I guess a, a big question we're going to ask today, and hopefully we're going to certainly uh, handle or, or in, in monitor here today, is are you really ready to handle the double-digit growth in parcel shipping? Now, we're going to try to do all that today, and we're going to do a great job of that today. As a matter of fact, our presenter, Ken Fleming, he's president of Logistics Technologies, and he's going to suggest that global parcel shipping requires a unique solution. Today, he's going to run, through, run us through some use case scenarios where traditional TMS solutions struggle with managing high-volume international shipping. He's also going to share how to design your shipping process and architecture to leverage both a traditional TMS and a multi-carrier shipping solution more effectively, and that's pretty cool. Looking forward to that part. And ideally, we're going to walk away from today's session with a better understanding of how shippers can reduce net landed cost of goods while addressing challenges such as omni-channel distribution, cross-border uh, commerce, and consumer delivery expectations, which are becoming and mounting every, every day. It's more and more challenging. Now, uh, just a quick note before we get started here, before Ken gets rolling, I should say, we're going to have time for a Q&A session after Ken goes through his presentation. So please make sure to submit your questions at any time. We're going to get to as many of those uh, as we can. But if we don't get to your question today, because uh, we do have a sort of a time frame to work with them, we're certainly going to package every single question up that we receive. We're going to move those over uh, to Ken to get Things rolling. You're also going to see plenty of uh, resources to download as a PDF of this presentation and, and other related content from the folks at Logistics. Uh, and please complete the survey at the conclusion of the event. It's always very helpful to us and Logistics in terms of how we're going to be uh, structuring so many of these uh, webcasts as we get going. So, uh, Ken, without any further ado, why don't you uh, take it away? Great. Thank you very much, Michael, and, and, and for the opportunity for um, having me back. Um, that I, I tell you that uh, the last time you and I had an opportunity to talk, we were covering off the five trends and what was going on within um, transportation, in particular focusing again on that parcel growth. And your introduction was an amazing summary of exactly what we've seen and what's happening. So um, with, um, with that in mind um, and based on your introduction, what I'm going to really go through uh, very quickly here, um, I'm just going to say quickly, but I'm going to go through for us all on the uh, presentation today, is I'm going to try to explain to our audience, those listening, the differences between multi-carrier shipping solutions and a transportation management system. And as you pointed out exactly that, and in doing so, kind of best practices on how to evaluate when and how, if, um, and, and which types of solutions are best for, for the, the listeners out there today. But um, to kick it all off, I just want to kind of set the stage a bit and focus more on a little bit, sorry, a little bit more on the, um, the trends that we're seeing with respect to why, why are we being faced with this question? What, what's actually causing it to happen? And, we, and I would say that it should seem obvious to us, but I find organizations and companies not, re, uh, not responding to it primarily due to confusion. And that's what I really hope to help out today. 
So um, if I kind of kick it off and say, this is the big question I think organizations are truly, really trying to understand. Are they ready to handle double-digit growth in parcel shipping? And when we talk about this, this is the growth, as you mentioned, of omni-channel, the growth with respect to a global e-commerce market where it doesn't matter where the company or their retail organizations are structured, they're trying to move their goods to their customers anywhere that customer resides in this world. And, and that's what we're, we're going to be going through today to say, are you ready? Do you know the types of systems you should be looking for? How do you identify what those systems are? And then once you do, how do you go about implementing those? Um, and, and that's what we're going to try to cover off. So um, let me just ad advance for, for us all here. So what we've got is um, when we take a look at the online systems, and this is just basically to set the stage, but we all know that it's growing. And what I would do is I would tell the audience here is that there is no change to the growth that we've seen since we started to record this. And, and, and in fact, it is actually matching what the growth expectations are. And it doesn't matter whether we're looking at this graph that's presented by eMarketer or other organizations, they're all showing this same kind of growth curve with respect to how many shipments are being delivered that final mile to the consumer and it's coming from multiple shipment locations now, whether it's the warehouse, the store, from direct from supplier, those numbers of shipments are increasing dramatically because of what a consumer's demand is. Now, a couple of background points. Uh, a few years back, we actually did some work with Ohio State University and um, the Fisher School of Business have a great program on um, uh, transportation logistics where they did a study that was reflecting is there a difference? When we think of transportation management systems, we typically have said, I've got a TMS, I'm going to plan my shipments, what's different about a parcel? And the key assumption is there was no difference. But what we've learned over the last several years are is there are some significant differences. And those are summarized in um, these next two slides. So first is um, shipping costs, especially when you get into parcel, the complexity and volume of shipments are increasing dramatically. And when you look at effective transportation, all right, and what's trying to, uh, what companies are trying to do, they're looking to be more reliable and work with partners in that the carrier network, so to speak, that are trustworthy in bringing their goods to the consumer. Right? So as a result, companies that are trying to solve the solution with one uh, piece of technology or the other, in my opinion, are not looking at it from a holistic point of view. And that's what I'm going to try to present to everybody today. Um, if I look at some key findings from a recent um, research paper that Gartner produced, when Gartner talked about what is multimodal transportation management and what are the core capabilities, um, there's a few listed here, but I really want to focus on that last point, which we will we'll touch base on uh, later on in our discussions. And that is the integration with the carrier networks providing real-time visibility, creating a digital broker, or giving access to um, alternate forms of uh, shipment and distribution. Um, and it makes the TMS solution, therefore, the centerpiece or the key part of what companies are looking to accomplish um, um, today as far as a solution set is, is, um, is defined. So, so in order to bring everybody onto the same page, what I'd like to do is borrow a couple of slides from our friends at Gartner. Now, we do a lot of work with the Gartner Group with respect to working with joint clients that we have, but also working with them as industry experts to understand how companies are making decisions and how they're evaluating what types of solutions that they're going to be looking for. And as a result of our work with Gartner, we've actually gone through and created this study, but it's based on a premise that starts with how they define TMS um, types and the positions of those solutions. Now, in the end of 2017, Gartner Group created a market study guide for multi-carrier parcel management solutions. Um, I, I have heard that phrase, whether it's multi-carrier shipping, whether it's multi-carrier, uh, uh, whether it's, uh, excuse me, um, uh, TMS for parcel, whether it's TME, which refers to transportation management execution, 
it always gets different names, but but it's all the same thing. How do I do transportation planning or management for the parcel component of what I need to distribute? And if we look at Gartner's traditional reports, um, this this chart is from them that says that magic quadrant, or what you can see highlighted here in the upper left-hand corner, is what the Gartner magic quadrant reports on. It tells us if you are looking for a solution that does multimodal domestic um, uh, capabilities, that, that that's what you're looking to address, and you are a shipper or a third-party logistics provider, that magic quadrant report is of value to you. And by reading it, you'll get great insight as to what TMS capabilities are available to solve what resides in that magic quadrant focus. Now, what Gartner determined is the world of transportation and what we do is based on a TMS user and a type of TMS that they're going to use. And it's not all one size fits all. And you'll see what they did with this chart so that they say, depending on who the user is and depending on the type of TMS or modality um, capability that they're looking for, there are different types of solutions and studies and reports that you should be reviewing. And that's what we're going to go over today is what those options are. So what's different about today versus any other discussion on a TMS is that the focus becomes this box here, um, that parcel management box for shippers or third-party logistics providers. And that's what I'm going to be able to walk everybody through. So. How do we figure out where I'm supposed to be looking or researching for information and therefore shopping for technology to help me solve my problem? And one of the things that we did um, in conjunction with Gartner is we sat down and we said, okay, what's uniquely different by the two? Now, on the left um, of, of this, this chart, the kind of funnel that's here that starts with 70% and then three tens refers to if you take shipment volume by modality and a typical TMS purchase, a company that buys a TMS system that would have reviewed Magic Quadrant and, and, and gone through and taken a look at the technologies that helps them decide what to um, select, a typical would have a shipment volume that looks similar to what's on the left, meaning 70% of their shipping volume would be full truckload, less than truckload type shipments. And then Parcel Ocean and other would make up that 30%, and it's usually split fairly um, evenly across all three. So if somebody says, what's typical? That's typical of TMS, according to Gartner. When we look at a multi-carrier shipping solution, TME or, or, or parcel, TMS for parcel, the, the, the mixture is very, very different in where you would see parcel being the dominant modality that has to be um, serviced in the 60 to 70% ratio, and then full, full truckload and less than truckload making up the greater, the next greater percentage, and then followed um, by a smaller percentage of ocean or other mixture um, um, with respect to that kind of system. So when you look at those last two charts that we put up, put up if you're thinking TMS Magic Quadrant, you typically look like the left. If you're thinking um, multi-carrier shipping in that parcel capability, you're typically looking at the right. But what I would propose is no, no organization is one or the other, left or right, so to speak, and that when they actually do an analysis, something magical happens in that, that the organization is actually way more blended. And you could do this same analysis within an organization that's based on either shipment volume, freight spend, it really doesn't matter how you look at it. You should do an analysis to determine, based on your shipping volumes, which types of systems should I be looking at and how am I going to implement those systems as a result. So this kind of shows what um, it would look like if you analyzed your organization from a blended fashion, but I'm going to propose one more thing, and that is that every company should start with a freight volume evaluation. So if I asked an organization today, and many of the, the, the companies that are out there listening to, to our presentation and discussions today, should take a look at this and say, if I answer this, what does my corporate profile look like? And on a corporate profile, it may very well look like the left-hand side, 70% of the volume, FTL, LTL, 
10, 10, 10 on the others. When you take your total freight volume in of all the types of shipments of all the goods and services that you distribute. If you did it, um, and that might fit more maybe for a manufacturer than a retailer. If you did it from a corporate, from a retailer who's doing um, a heavy amount of last mile distribution, say as a textile retailer that's doing a lot of deliveries to a home, the matrix might look like the left. But they should fill that in and say, this is what my corporate profile looks like. And then, does that profile change regionally or nationally or even location specific? So, for example, is my transportation, my fulfillment organization set up that I do all e-commerce fulfillment from a centralized warehouse where that warehouse is 100% parcel delivery? So when you fill this in, you'll find you get a very different mixture with respect to how and what kinds of solutions you should be evaluating. Now, um, what we've done in this chart, and, and as you mentioned that everybody here will have access to the slides when you're filling this out, is just to say, there's the TMS common, there's the multi-carrier shipping common, but what do you look like and how would, that, um, how would you evaluate that inside your organization? Now, what I've done is to say, the results can be very, very different. So if I looked at the same results for, say, a, a global volume, it could be a 60-35-5 mix. If I did it regionally, saying the North American market or European market, it might be a 40-45-5. If I said my e-commerce center, uh, where I'm doing all my e-commerce fulfillment transactions on, um, it might be a 10-80-5-5 mixture. So in each of these profiles, we're seeing that I have different ways of doing fulfillment and execution of my transportation logistics plan that actually needs to be dressed in different ways. And what I would contest to anyone out there that is looking for what's the right thing for me and what should I do is you absolutely have to start with the evaluation criteria that I've presented so far to say each one of these things could present a different solution. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to steal my punchline in a moment when I say one size does not fit all, all right? So let me give you an example of what happens when you say, well, well, okay, but is there really a difference? And here is a list of companies, and forgive me, I'm the presenter today, so I moved logistics' name to the top rather than everything being alphabetical, but if you look at these companies, the sample vendors on the left-hand side reflect what is in the transportation, what is in the uh, TMS magic quadrant provided by Gartner Group. And the company names there, you'll notice, don't match the company names that are on the transportation management execution or multi-carrier shipping solutions from a different report that they do. And the main reason that that is true is those technologies and what they do and the problems that they solve and how they do it are very, very different um, with respect to what they're trying to provide to their customer. So if you have said, but I've already got a TMS and I'm using one of the companies that are on there, why can't I use that to solve the other um, uh, funnels, if you like, that, that Ken's presented today? The answer is because it wasn't designed to do that. And if you said the same thing of the right-hand side of why they're not capable of doing the aspects of what's in the TMS magic quadrant, it's because they weren't designed to do that. So why is it then when we talk to customers, prospects, and meet with Gartner, the organizations with support of their IT team are looking to try to get everything done with one technology? I can make it all fit. My TMS can handle it. They say they can ship a parcel, or I can handle a parcel, or um, my multi-carrier shipping system, it can actually do an LTL or an FTL transaction. All those statements are true, but how they do it and how they work with the company's business applications are very, very different. And so let's kind of introduce that to our, to our audiences listening today. So um, first, um, what should shippers expect? This is a, um, um, another set of key capabilities that Gartner presented in the market study guide for parcel management solutions. And they said there are nine key functions that a solution provider should have within that core capability. So companies that were on the right-hand side of that, that uh, previous slide that I presented should have the ability or at least a roadmap 
of the ability to do these nine core functions within the solutions that they provide. I will tell you, I think the most important one, which we'll get to later in the presentation, is missing from this Gartner analysis, all right? However, it was mentioned, a key, key little um, uh, tip um, is that they mentioned it in that introductory reference of what, what companies be looking for. So first, we're gonna organize this a bit and say that there actually is a flow to those requirements that a multi-carrier solution will focus on procurement. What do we mean by that? We need contracts. We need to understand the rates. We need to understand um, which, which um, carriers we're utilizing within our global network of distribution worldwide and how we're going to manage them. Contract management, therefore, becomes key. Core capabilities with respect to parcel, parcel optimization, right sizing, for example, uh, label and document generation, I'm going to pause for a second on this one because I think that is the one that most companies go, I need to put a label on the box. I need a parcel solution. That's what I need. And what, what Gartner is telling us here and what I hope to leave this audience with is it's more than the label or what we, we like to say, it's beyond the label, right? I think before we mentioned this in one of our last uh, um, uh, sessions that we had together that we said it's, you know, it's like it's when the label hits the box. Um, and, and what we're really saying now is it's well beyond that. Real-time visibility, um, uh, sorry, I, I flipped it around, but uh, parcel consolidation, visibility, label document generation, the actual execution or, or delivery part of it, parcel freight payment to ensure that we're receiving invoices and paying for what we ask when we ship and, and making sure we're doing that in a more optimized fashion and then providing business intelligence and reporting so that we're learning from our transactions and therefore making better decisions at the front end of the process. And we actually could create a circular reference here to say the data on the back end gets fed into the front end and we become smarter and smarter and smarter through the use of business intelligence, artificial intelligence, and machine-based learning. But let's leave that for another presentation on another day. So. Those are the nine core capabilities that companies that are looking to solve that multi-carrier solution should be considering within the profile of what they want a solution provider to bring to the table. So I mentioned earlier, beyond, beyond the label. Well, what do I mean? Now, what we have found um, ourselves is that when we work with customers, what we have found is we have to understand where the customer is in their journey towards a nominee channel strategy, towards a, um, a, a, a multinational e-commerce strategy, or if they're just doing, for example, a small and medium business that's saying, hey, I'm a growing business and I'm, gonna, I'm increasing my parcel volume and I have to be able to respond quickly to customer demands. So to do that, um, I'm going to do uh, I can't call this a magic quadrant or a Gartner quadrant because it's not theirs. This was, this is a, let's call it the Ken quadrant or the logistics quadrant, but it's a way of looking at it similar to the way that Gartner does. And so kind of sticking with our theme here of utilizing Gartner's industry expertise and applying it to our topic for today. So if we think of the left-hand access here as being the level of execution, meaning I'm doing low volumes, small amount of countries, maybe just a domestic solution only, I'm going to be down in the lower left-hand part of that axis. As I grow execution, increasing markets, countries, territories I'm shipping to, access to new carriers, I'm going to slide up that execution axis. When I look at the lower axis here to the right, I'm thinking more about what are the core functions that we're looking to try to do. So going back to my previous slide where I paused on label execution. This lower quadrant is the base quadrant for what is a company that's starting to do multi-carrier shipping, parcel fulfillment, looking to do. They need access and connectivity or compliance to typically one to, between one to three carriers and no more. Typically, their shipping is domestic only. Um, regardless of which country our listeners are in, you're doing very local, um, uh, more consolidated uh, type shipping within a specific region. And you're doing what I would call basic rate and label capabilities, which is 
pick the right carrier, be compliant with them, generate the right labels at the best cost possible. That's what any base system should be able to do. If we move up the access level, what we're doing is we're saying, I want to continue to do those base execution components, but now I'm increasing volume, maybe adding a carrier in another market. So if I'm a U.S. Uh, company and I'm now starting to ship into Canada, I need to get access to Canadian carriers. If I'm a U.S. company heading to Europe, or if I'm a European company that's based in Germany and I'm now trying to go pan-euro or access the U.K. market, then I'm going to require access to different carriers, but what I'm looking for is still a consistent set of technologies to ensure that I'm compliant with those carriers and still do base label execution. When I look to the right or expanding capabilities from a vision perspective, that changes things yet again. And here we're saying a company is likely looking to extend the capabilities of just parcel execution, labeling, and rating. And that is moving into I would like to do contract management. I would like to evaluate service options. What happens if I go from a standard, day, a standard delivery service into a two-day? Or what's the impact if I moved all priority shipments to overnight? What would be my increase in costs? Those types of um, intellect or analysis or business intelligence get supplied to the standard shipping processes to be able to help companies determine how to make better decisions creating real-time visibility through control tower applications that proactively alert the users and customers when shipments are going wrong or there's an issue with the carrier. Uh, those types of things that can occur and regularly occur are notified if an organization has advanced capabilities in their profile. And then obviously adding in other extended capabilities of business intelligence and auditing the actual performance of both carriers and their shipping, own shipping performance applications. And then the last is when those all get combined. A company is going truly global. They have to distribute in multiple regions worldwide, different countries. They may be, for example, say, I've got distribution in Asia Pacific. I've got distribution going on in Europe. I've also got presence in North America. I would like to do same-day delivery in, in, in multiple um, uh, cities around the world where I've got high volume. Um, if you think about luxury goods, for example, um, cities like London, Paris, New York, Los Angeles, Tokyo, Seoul, um, or Shanghai, same-day delivery service for high luxury goods for a consumer is very important. But connecting to carriers in those regions in a standard common way and addressing all the boxes that I've discussed so far is what companies are looking to try to do. So what we do when we meet with companies is we say, where are you on the journey? You may be solely in the lower left, and that's your comfort zone, that's your business, it matches your model, and that's okay. There is technology out there that's, that's there for you. Fill out this evaluation that we're suggesting today. It'll help you zoom in on the capability, uh, on the companies and solutions that you should be looking at and filter down those core capabilities to solve what's in that lower left. If you have a company that's on a journey towards a global omni-channel strategy, which would be the upper right-hand um, quadrant here, then how are they going to get there? They may be in one country, lower left. They may be in another country utilizing a lower right solution. But what's their strategy to get from those quadrants into that upper right? And if there's anything that Gartner has taught us all over the years is that there is a cycle, there's a methodology to get there, Right? And building your plans and strategies to do so is very key to a company's success and execution. So those are the four ways that we like to work with companies to say, where are you today? Where are you trying to get to? And let's, let's talk about that journey and how we're going to assist them to get there. So what we're covering today is a, not just a logistics response. This, is, this can be applied to any company that's got any strategy. Right? You can take this, apply it look to any of the vendors on the chart. Obviously, we'd love them to talk to us, but the context is to get you thinking about the right things to help you make the right decisions. So let's move forward a little bit based on now that we've got this background kind of educational insight, what do we do with it? Well, a couple of key things. First of all, when you're selecting a TMS, 
regardless of whether it's focused on addressing parcel or whether or not it's going to do multimodality, et cetera, every organization, in addition to this evaluation of freight volume that we've suggested and reviewing the vendors, reviewing the core capabilities we've discussed, should take a look at the following key guidelines, right? One is what transport modalities am I really going to use? What's my shipment volume by modality? What's the system of record that's going to drive the fulfillment process specifically for parcel? Is the data coming from my CRM system, an order management system, an ERP system, a WMS system, even a TMS system can talk to a TMS system, right? And lastly, what is the structure of my logistics network? Where are my warehouses? Am I doing ship from store? All that information has to be gathered in order for a company to say, now, what's the right solution and where do I go from here? So what we're suggesting is any organization that's on our call today and listening, if you haven't done this research, stop. Go back and ask these questions again and see how well you can answer them. Because if you can answer them very, very well, then your journey to understanding what kinds of technology are available for me, where should I be looking, which vendors are capable of helping me, will become much, much clearer. And then those companies trying to help you are going to be very focused about how they fit and plug into this scenario. So, right, where do we go from here? First is integration is required. Now, I, I have had too many conversations with organizations I've met, consultants I've spoken uh, to, um, uh, presentations I've made at different conferences where people come up and say, I really need this to be easy. And while it can be made easy, everything I've described so far is key. Gather this data, understand who, who and what systems we're integrating with, and by doing that, you certainly can make the process simpler. But remember, you're on a journey. Are you looking at that lower left-hand quadrant trying to get the upper right-hand quadrant? And if so, recognize that you're going to have potentially multiple points of integration that have to occur. So these are the types of things that we're saying companies need to look at. So what do we mean by integration? Well, simply put, um, uh, we rec like to refer to this as black box because if the system's doing its job, then you should be able to integrate to it in order to be able to make it seamless, that if your warehouse management system, for example, is doing is where all the order fulfillment is done, then the warehouse management system needs to be able to talk to the TME and, uh, or, or multi-carrier shipping, and that's going to do its function and pass the information back. So orders and shipments passed, rates and rate shopping information back. Shipping decisions made, the TME system says, great, I'm going to use this carrier, carrier X, carrier Y, and then that carrier is going to provide information back and is going to communicate that back into the green and into the, the applications on the back end. For a system to do that, what's actually visible to an IT organization or what is visible to a logistics organization, frankly, is nothing. It's completely automated, and the decisions from the back end system are communicating directly with the TME system to be able to provide that integrated strategy. The second thing that we look at is well, once we have that and we're printing the labels, right, we've now got label compliance and documentation that has to go flow back to the warehouse system because the warehouse system is going to print the label. And then once that's done, data regarding that shipment, the pickup, the end-of-day delivery manifesting information has to be sent to the carriers so that the carriers know what they're doing and what they're supposed to pick up from a capacity perspective. That requires a different type of integration, one worth the solution working with the carriers. And that's a hint to where I'm going with that missing key function. The next piece, that control tower talking about visibility to what's happened. So the first two steps, one was creating and selecting the shipment. The second was commuting with a carrier. And now what we're doing is we're trying to say, what's the status of my shipments? So from that carrier network, we expect to get track trace and proof of delivery information back. It comes back into that TMS system, and it's going to provide shipment status information back to a WMS, OMS system so that our, our, our um, audience today, the users that are out there that uh, want, for example, their customers to have access to where is my shipment, that information is pushed back into those applications that communicate with their customers, including potentially their websites. 
And then the last step is, okay, I've done that fulfillment. If it was delivered on time in full and I was invoiced, does my invoice information match what I actually pay, um, should have paid for when I ordered my shipment transaction? And how do I do that invoice, um, um, if you like, acquisition acceptance, reconciliation, audit, and therefore integrate my freight payment process? Now, for those companies that are on the call with us today that are saying, hmm, you know, that sounds a little extreme for me, Think about what we said when we opened up our introduction um, of today's session. Are, are you looking for that exponential growth? Because we've got companies today that are starting with small shipping volumes and they're growing exponentially, adding ship from store, exponential. And the more shipment volumes they get, the more invoices they get by line item that have to be reconciled so that you, as a shipper, ensure you're getting what you paid for and you're not being charged anymore. So that whole process is very key and becomes a bigger challenge for companies as their shipment volume increases. Now, what happens when you put all these things together? I don't want to scare everybody on the call today, but it looks something like this. Now, why we have it in here is because, as Michael said, everybody's going to have these slides. You'll be able to print this through. You'll be able to say a step-by-step -step approach of integrating your business processes, those in the blue, with the shipping application in the green, connecting to the dark green carrier network, and see where the data flows and the information that's shared across each of those. And that's highlighted for everybody here that they can re review on their own time. So with that, I'm going to be a little cheeky, if you don't mind, Michael, and that is I thought I would ask my own first question. Right, and um, in this particular case, it's one that kind of sets it up for what I said at the beginning, is what's the main differentiator then of a multi-carrier shipping solution versus TMS? And I'm going to answer it with what would seem to be a simple answer, yet one that's not so simple to be able to support, and that is what we call carrier compliance, in that a TMS system is a piece of technology that can be acquired and installed, and it has to be configured, set up, structured, and managed to be able to work with a carrier network, to work with a group of carriers that you're trying to do shipments on. A multi-carrier shipping solution comes with that compliance, meaning as a part of the solution, what it does is ensure that it can provide rate information from the carriers directly back to the user. Um, those rates, those services are all loaded into the application and it is real time. And this, this case that the, the IT team doesn't have to load and manage and set up all those things inside the TMS, the TME solution and the services provided by those companies are providing access to that information automatically. So a rate change occurs, the service is being provided. A, a carrier changes their label format, that format is up to, updated into the system. And therefore, being compliant and up to date with any carrier or carrier change is done on their behalf. Um, I'll give you two interesting um, stories from real customer cases. Um, we have a company, um, uh, a partner company that's a third-party logistics provider in the U.S. market. And Prior to utilizing our solution, they themselves were utilizing a TMS solution and that TMS solution that they would configure, what does the label have to look like? Um, what is the carrier telling me to set that label format up? And they put that solution in three identical warehouses in the United States. And for the sake of it in our minds, let's say there was one east, one central, one west. And each one of those was set up for the exact same carrier who will remain um, nameless in this case, right? When they presented the labels to that carrier to say, I want you to certify this because we're gonna start producing shipments for that, the same company validated the same label differently in all three locations. And only one of them was told they could ship and the other two were given advice to change the label format in order to be ready and compliant to ship with that carrier. Now. What was uniquely different with it is 
the carrier is not certifying the technology or the label. They're certifying the company's ability to create those, those compliant labels, those formats. And what multi-carrier shipping companies like ours do is we certify compliance. So we get approved by the carriers to say what we produce is automatically compliant and therefore eliminating the time, effort, and complexity of those users that would have to build it and do it themselves with the technology that they bought. So that is one of the major factors that's highlighted with what we define as carrier compliance. And that means everything from rates, services, labels, documentation, ensuring the formats for the pickup end of day manifest transactions, the compliance of the track and trace data. Think of track and trace that um, three different carriers, when they generate error message or status messages, they all send you back their own unique messages. So you have to be able to do a translation from their message format into your common format versus a one-to-one -one ratio that would be provided by a carrier compliant network. Proof of delivery information. And then once those e-invoices coming in, the reconciling and integration of those e-invoices back into the shipments. So picture your, in your mind back to the second slide that we talked about, which said, Companies, are you ready for the exponential growth? Are you looking to distribute your products and services worldwide? Is it on a country-by-country -country basis? Is it you're growing and adding carriers? And if you multiply this complexity by taking a look at just some of the carriers that are providing these services at different parts of the world, there are thousands of different forms of compliance that companies have to, to, to match. And one of the things that I would tell you is that there is no carrier out there that does it the same way. There's no standard for the industry. There is no uh, single carrier that if you said, is there one that does it the same way for, say, Europe, North America, and Asia Pacific? The answer is no, no, and no. Every carrier does it differently, and in some cases, differently at every country, and in some countries, different based on different carrier services. That complexity needs to be managed by you if you're not looking at a multi-carrier solution that comes with that carrier compliance piece that, we were, that I said was missing from the original focus in the beginning. Now, to wrap it up, um, what I would um, uh, tell everybody uh, that's listening today is that we, uh, uh, my company working with me, uh, put together this as more as an advisory um, kind of presentation, things you consider, things you should be thinking about. But I'd also like to suggest there are other research and things you could look at. You know, Gartner have um, the report that I highlighted at the beginning, which is the holistic multimodal transportation solution. What are the core capabilities? They've got a great report that we reference here that would provide companies insight as to the types of things you should be looking for. You could obviously take a look at that magic quadrant and evaluate what's going on in that TMS side. And then ultimately take a look at, if you're thinking about parcel, you must look at that market guide. And I can tell you right now that Gartner is actually producing a revision. So the last one was October of 2017. In the fourth quarter of this year, there's a 2019 version which will be updated from that last report that they're going to produce. So I'd like to stop here if we can, Michael, and say, um, one is, you know, in the presentation, when everybody gets it, yes, there, there's some slides that are there that talk about my company, what we do, where we are, and the kinds of things that we can offer um, um, the, the audience that's listening to today. However, I think it's best that um, I pause. It's not meant to be a company commercial versus yep. more of an educational session. Um, so let me pause there and hand it back to you to see if we have any questions from from those uh, online with us today. You, you got it, Ken. Yep, great job today. Uh, outstanding job uh, putting together and uh, communicating some of the differences. And I think it's, it's uh, as I, d I said in the setup, and you had mentioned a number of times, um, it's so easy to fall into that uh, thinking that uh, you know TMS can can handle the, the, these different uh, these different areas. Now, I want to uh, remind everybody that's in the audience right now. We've got a number of questions rolling in, and we are kind of up against some time, so we will have a few moments to answer some questions. 
questions or for Ken to answer some questions. But I guarantee you, uh, we're going to capture all of your questions. So if you are asking questions right now, I see a number of them coming in. Uh, please know that we're going to capture all those questions, uh, move them over to Ken, and he'll be able to get back to you uh, uh, via email with those, those questions and follow up appropriately. So Ken, uh, you know, a couple questions that are rolling in here, and I think you, you did a terrific job of setting it up early on. But if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, pull a couple questions to here together. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, again, sharing that main differentiator of, of a multi-carrier um, shipping system versus that TMS, that traditional TMS that we've all we've all be, uh, come to know over the years. What is the key differentiator there? Can you can you clarify that for us? Sure. So I I, I kind of left it and I said, okay, let me be sneaky and throw in my own yep. first question. Um, I'm not going to repeat it, but I'll just say, think about that carrier compliance piece. Understanding yep. the complexity and how you need to work with carriers is key. Um, yep. I meant, you know, I mentioned, I said, you know, I apologize because I said I'll give two examples and I ended up only giving one, but I'll give one right. quick story and then I'll move on to another key factor. Um, we had a customer in Europe and the same thing happened is that a car- one of the carriers had sent to us the latest carrier compliance stuff. So they said, as of this date, we're upgrading all of our systems and labels now have to be structured as this. And we deployed it into our customers. And um, on that day, at the end of day pickup, the carrier came by, scanned the parcels at that particular location, and then said, um, we can't take these, they're not compliant, and hmm. left without taking any of the parcels. Right. And I can tell you, we got a phone call very, very quickly from our customer that hmm. said, hey, hang on, logistics, what did you do? Something's changed because the carrier's not picking up the goods. They said the labor's right. not compliant. And we said, hang on, you know, that, that's what we do, right? That's part of the service. And we validated the documentation we received from the carrier to the label produce. We said, can you give us a look? And then in this particular case, we said, hang on, we'll be right there because the, their distribution center was not clear, uh, close to our offices in the Amsterdam area. So we mm-hmm. actually went on site and compared the documentation to the label and they matched. Mm-hmm. What we then did is because if you think of Europe, the carrier, a lot of the carriers are based in the same area around Schiphol Airport. So we actually right. drove to the carrier and within the hour with the package and their documentation, we said, can you help me understand what the differences are? And they found mm-hmm. out instantly that there were none. What had happened yep. was they didn't upgrade their technology and their scanners to be able to read their new huh. compliance. Right. So okay. What I would do is say that's the key factor. That, that we live yep. and breathe that every single day. Okay, gotcha. uh, key point number one. Um, other differentiator that I would probably highlight for the group is the systems are designed to work differently. When you think of transportation management systems and that magic quadrant report, yep. then if, if it and I can't remember off the top of my head the nine core whatever the core functions they have are very different than the nine that we presented today on multi carrier shipping. Mm-hmm. So. If you look at those two things, things on the TMS side, you, you need to order your, you know, your, your containers. You need to order, for example, the trucks that you're going to be using. You're planning maybe the, the fleets and trying to, excuse me, do fleet management as a part of it. Yep. Those types of things are in typical TMS strategies. You'll be doing route optimization where you're saying, I want to plan a route with respect to what my load and distribution within my truck load or whatever other modality is going to look like, and the capabilities are all in there. When you do parcel, you don't plan the route, right? right. The carriers themselves right. optimize for themselves with mm-hmm. you and your distribution and the parcels in mind. So things like that don't exist in a multi-carrier shipping solution because they're not yeah. needed. Yeah, but right. being able to produce high-velocity rating, think one one-hundredth of a second to do yeah. a rate response to determine – if you're doing the right shipping methodology for an e-commerce transaction, you're not going to mm-hmm. find that in a TMS system. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. you've got to look for two different things, and that's what gotcha. I'm basically highlighting. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that's that's terrific. That makes it very, very clear, Ken. Great job. Uh, we are up against uh, the clock. We, we do have time for another one or two quick questions, Ken, uh, as we kind of wrap things up. Again, please uh, keep those questions flowing in. We're going to capture all those, and we'll get as many uh, – we'll get them all, actually, over to Ken. Uh, Ken, again, I, I was interested in this, and, and a couple uh, folks from the floor had uh, asked about – um, the, the, whether or not a TMS can support a multi-carrier shipping system or an MCSS, 
Can the TMS support MCSS capabilities and vice versa? It, it goes both ways, right? I think you kind of went into yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've actually got another chart that I didn't do today uh, mm-hmm. that, 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 that probably could have I'm not sure if we used it, if it would have went, uh-oh, I'm not sure I could understand uh, right, this for a right. second because it shows where the two collide. So here's yep. the thing. We're, we're, when you consolidate parcels, so let's say um, we're, we, we are in an e-commerce fulfillment center, and what we've done is we've labeled all the parcels, and the parcels are all set for last mile. And then we're going to consolidate and palletize that shipment so that we can do a line haul pallet shipment to a regional distribution center or different distribution uh, 3PL company who's going to handle that last mile distribution on the, the final segment. And I'm doing yep. so because that's going to get me the lowest cost of total delivery. Now, in doing that, the multi-carrier shipping does it, the solution does it, but the palletization means that we're going to step up from a um, what I'd call a parcel, individual parcel shipment to mm-hmm. looking to an LTL or FTL type transaction. But we're right. still using those those same carriers. So what we find is a TMS transaction, which is looking for a full truckload plan, could call upon a carrier in the network. And the parcel mm-hmm. system that is consolidating the and palletizing transactions could call upon the same carriers. So where IT teams and business teams confuse themselves between one or the other is who's talking to the FTL LTL provider, and. That's right. not a big challenge. The challenge is, right. what are you talking to them about? And right. many companies make the mistake that say, well, my TMS talks to my LTL. Why can't I handle that? And the issue is it does talk to them, but it doesn't talk to them the way that they process and manage parcel. Right. So the answer isn't really one or the other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's both. And how mm-hmm. are they going to work together? And that's one of the things that, that we also have had to help companies understand is how they work together. Right, right. So, Ken, time for one last question, and, I, and, I, and I, this is kind of coming from me, and I, I'd like to have you wrap it up today as, as uh, you know, to put all this kind of a neat bow. So many of the folks are out there uh, in joining us today and, and trying to make that decision. They're kind of on the fence, which, they, which way they want to go. You know, how do you – what would be your kind of key takeaway here in helping a, 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 partic- a, a customer, a potential customer or a, or a shipper sort of decide in which, which way to go, um, either, either – you know, coming in that back way with the, uh, on the TMS with the MCSS or, or going full bore with the MCSS. Well, how, do you, how do you help them make a decision? What, what would be that key takeaway today to kind of push them over the fence? So um, what, what I would suggest, and, and hopefully our discussion today and the way that we've laid the materials out will help organizations on the call think about what their what question or what business problems they're trying to solve and therefore right, they can right. start to fill this out and get a better idea. However, when I look at it from, if I'm going to uh, point it out, I've seen too many companies that look at it from that perspective of, I need to generate the labels. And they tend to think of TMS and multi-carrier shipping as, all right, I just implemented an EWMS, I'm deploying an omni-channel strategy, and i got to put a label on the box, right? Right. And if there's anything I could have demonstrated more is, the process by which these systems work and how they're going to make a company truly optimize their fulfillment operations and their transportation network is start early. Mm-hmm. Don't go, don't go. You know, once I get my warehouse up and my warehouse management systems up and running, then I'm going to say, okay, how do I print the labels and what am I going to, how am I going to do parcel management? Because at that particular point, you're reacting rather yep. than planning and forecasting gotcha. with respect to where you want to go. So use yep. that kind of Ken quadrant I said earlier. Figure yep. out where you are today. Answer that modality question. And then based on that, zoom in on those documents that I've suggested. You know, ultimately, give us a call. We'd love to help the organizations that are out there. Um, but one thing I can promise is if you don't fit into the wheelhouse of what it is we're offering and your organization is better served by a TMS versus what we are offering, my company, me, would always say, you need to go get the TMS solution. It's better for right. you. Absolutely. My, my yep. premise here is you're on this call because your parcel volume is growing, and if that's the case, you really need to focus on multi-carrier shipping, and it's different mm-hmm. from TMS. That yep. would yep. be my closing comment. Yep, terrific, and a terrific takeaway, Ken. Uh, Ken Fleming, President of Logistic Te- 
Logistics Technologies. Uh, Ken, just another terrific job today. Um, really appreciate it, and thank you for the key differentiators there and some great advice as well. That's, that's, that's just terrific. And I want to thank everybody for attending. And remember, for all the attendees out there, we are capturing your questions. We're going to be moving those over to Ken. And as Ken mentioned uh, several times, it's a great idea to download those slides. And if you have more questions, get right back uh, to him uh, with those. But Ken, great job, my friend. Well done, and thank you so much. Thanks again, Michael. Take care.